Hey, everybody, what's going on? It is Monday afternoon. It is Kaplan and crew. Got Grande and the Brown Man. But um, I'm going to just start off by telling everybody, I'm not so sure how much of today's broadcast I'm going to make. What a strange weekend and what a strange few days it has been. You know, um, if you're up to speed on what's going on in the San Diego sports scene, there was a very famous sports agent by the name of Barry Axelrod. And Barry had died last week. And then after that, then Sean Burroughs, the former Padre player, died last week. Young man on the field of coaching his son's Little League. Then this guy, Sam Rubin, died from KTLA. I mean, it's been weird. And today, I, I sadly, I have to go to the Rady Shell because one of my best friends, his mom died, uh, Joan Jacobs, who is like one of the most famous philanthropists in all of San Diego. And today is her funeral. So I'm just saying all that because then the A.J. Smith thing happened, which was yesterday. A.J. Smith, the former Chargers general manager. So Grande and Brown Man will have the show coming up for you. I will jump in as I can. But before I do, uh, before I hand off to the guys, can I just have a quick second to just give love to our, our partners? Because without these guys, I'm telling you right now, we don't get to do this every day and we don't get to all be together. Seven Mile Casino, you know their story. Seven minutes south of downtown, best location, blackjack, poker, other table games, Sammy's Restaurant and Bar, no smoking, right off the freeway, best place to play, Seven Mile Casino. Hey, um, I'm going to just make it quick. Prize picks. Download the prize picks app. Because right now we're getting deeper into the basketball playoffs. We got baseball every day. We've got Caitlin Clark in the WNBA, that free box at 0.5 points. So make sure you download the prize picks app. Use our code great friends. They match your first deposit 100% up to 100 bucks. And you're in the game with me, Grande Brownman, and 5 million other people playing on prize picks. Big shout out to our people at Tory Holistics, California Holistics. I know this past weekend was Mother's Day. I gave away a lot of cannabis products for Mother's Day because. A friend with weed is a friend indeed. That's what they say. And uh, I know some moms that like weed and that's, I was, I was Santa Claus, you know, um, if you need cannabis products, sleep, uh, or anxiety, pain management, recreation, Tory Holistics, California Holistics, Oxnard Holistics, you spend $75 or more, you use our code Kaplan crew, you save 20%. A uh, big shout out to our people at blenders. Um, this past weekend, I went down to the Padres game on Sunday. I didn't even go to the game. I just went down to feel the vibe of the streets. Padres, I, I went to a bar, I was able to watch it all. Padres over to Wonderfront, no tickets, kind of made it all happen. Uh, but rocking those blenders, man. And people ask me all the time, like, yo, where'd you get those? I'm like, dude, the blender store in Encinitas. But you can get them online, blenderseyewear.com. Use our code Kaplan, you save 20%. And they're so inexpensive and they're such high quality. You might as well buy five or six pairs, getting yourself all set up for the summer. Hey, uh, my guy, Brett Weiss, Life Brew, Mushroom Life. Um, remember last week we changed the code. We changed the code uh, on, on Life Brew to great friends. And now when you use that code, you'll get 30% savings on the Life Brew coffee. Mushroom coffee is a new phenomenon sweeping the country. And we have our partnership with Brett right here in San Diego, where he makes what most people say is the best tasting mushroom coffee on the market. Life Brew, L-Y-F-E, lifebrew.com. Use our code great friends. You'll save 30% when ordering that new Life Brew coffee. And last. Hey, my guy, Gary Cooper, 858-376-1299. So interesting. Last week, he told us he had four listings right now, four listings of houses, and all four of the people that are that are selling their houses are all moving out of the state. If you are ready to move, if you are looking to upgrade, if you need to refinance for some reason, you need a home equity line of credit, anything in real estate, you talk to Gary Cooper, 858-376-1299. All right, I'm handing off this first segment to the guys. I'm hoping to make it back. I really want to talk about the Padres Dodgers. I'd really like to talk about this A.J. Smith thing from this weekend, but I got to get to this Joan Jacobs uh, celebration of life. So Grande, Brown Man, here you guys go. And uh, everybody, I hope to see you during the show. Yo, what's up, everybody? Kaplan and crew with just the crew for now. If you watched the on YouTube and audio podcast, you saw Scott was here for the pre-roll. We'll get into all that here shortly. Uh, but before we do, just want a quick reminder for those of you listening on radio and watching on television. We are brought to you by the Seven Mile Casino, sevenmilecasino.com. Just minutes away from downtown San Diego South in Chula Vista. They have all of your favorite table games. They have a ton of TVs. They have a Sammy's restaurant and bar. It's a smoke-free, clean environment, and it's a lot of fun. And if you have not been, go check them out. 
If you're going to the game tonight, stop by first, get some drinks, get some food, and make your way to the game. Seven Mile Casino, like I said, just minutes away from downtown and right off the five freeway, sevenmilecasino.com. All right. It is myself, Grande. It is Browner in the booth today. Scott out at huh. the um um the the life celebration of the Jake for the Jacobs family down at the Rady Shell. He is planning on joining us here probably in the next segment. Uh, like I said, if you were watching on YouTube, you saw he did pre-roll. So it's just like a weird show today, but he does want to jump on because a lot has happened uh this past weekend. Before we get to all of it, though, Browner, are you dropping a disc? diss track soon like why are you standing like you're in a booth today by the way if you're listening on radio if you're listening on audio podcast we all sit for the show we all sit down for the show you today do. browner has decided to stand up so now he's standing yeah, yeah, yeah. and moving side to side like he's about to shadow box or something like he's in a booth about to drop some heat what's what's going on with the stand-up desk what's today uh all these diss tracks out here i figured i'd do a diss track today against every radio station in town boy nah but I figured I'd do the show standing today. I don't okay. know. I don't know. We'll see where this goes. If I like it, I'll keep doing it. And if I don't like it, I won't do it again. So, I mean, you know, I, I got the arm. Mm -hmm. I feel like it, it looks better from this angle anyway. So I figured I'd give it a shot. We'll see where it yeah, goes. Yeah, but you don't think that, okay, let me ask you a question. I don't care. I don't get distracted by these things. But you know who we work with. You know Mr. Oh, distracted. God. You know Mr. Oh. Why, is, why is this different? That's not how it normally is. Why are we? Why are you doing that? How do you a? I don't think he'll notice it today because he'll be on his phone. But tomorrow, if you do this again and you're going oh, yeah. like this and you're like standing, how far does he make it to the show before he starts complaining to you? Oh, oh, we'll see a text because sometimes for people to know, full disclosure, we send text during the sh while we're recording because we don't want to say it mm -hmm. visually. We send text to each other. Oh, there will be a text. Browner standing is weird. It'll it'll yeah. it'll go. It'll it'll come. Yeah. Browner standing is weird. Yeah, because if Scott's always little things is like Browner's mic seems hot. Browner's mic seems yeah. low. Browner's this. Browner that. Browner this. Browner that. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, you're always in the crosshairs with him. Shout out! I love it. I enjoy it. I enjoy it. So, dude, uh, before we get to everything, I've said that three times before. Before, but what's up, man? How was your weekend? Did you uh, make it down to Wonderfront? Weren't you trying to go down there for Man, a day? Listen, I don't think I've ever seen a festival where no one got hurt get this many negative reviews. Just really absolutely trash. There were people saying it took them two hours to get their wristband. And then after you got your wristband at Will Call, then you had to go get in line again to get into the show. The person who I wanted to see on Friday was T-Pain. The second I found out T-Pain is playing at 4.30 p.m. I was yes. out. I'm out. I'm out. Their, I guess their explanation for him performing at 4.30 was that they wanted to make sure that there were no time conflicts and they wanted everybody to see everybody. But mm -hmm. what I would like to share with those people, people who like T-Pain have jobs. And those people who listen to T-Pain got to go to work. So T-Pain playing at 4.30, and no one knowing T-Pain was playing at 4.30 until it was pretty much too late. But I don't understand why people didn't know that. The lineup, the daily lineup has been out for a while. Again, no one looks at that until it's time to actually start figuring so, out how you're going to get down there. Well, that sounds like those people's problems, not the organizers' it is. problems. <laughs> it is, but it's the organizers' problem when it takes you two hours to get to yes. will call so you can get your wristband. And sure. It's another problem that once you get this wristband, you then got to get in line to go through security to get into the festival. Mm. Now, again, safety is everyone's number one concern. I, by a person who didn't attend it and experienced it firsthand, I can't really tell you any intricacies about how bad it was or how good it was. But what I can tell you is that there are an overwhelming amount of complaints from Friday about how bad it was to try to get in there. So I just, you know, it ain't. I missed it. I missed it. So you didn't go. I missed it. No, for what? T Pain's at four thirty. I'm out. I don't. Who? I don't want to see nobody else there. I think I feel you. I feel you. Did you make it to a Padres Dodgers game? Man, listen. Didn't need to. The view is better from my house. And but oh, oh yeah, yeah. While we're here, you know a lot of Dodger fans. Correct. I do. Mm -hmm. You have a chat. You got a chat going. Mm -hmm. 
tell them it's okay for them to openly say they don't like Padres. It's okay for them to openly say they hate Padre fans because they try to make Padre fans seem beneath them. Like you're the little oh, brother yeah. and, and mm-hmm. we don't really care about you, bro. If y'all didn't care, why y'all doing parades? Why do y'all need to do a parade? Why? If y'all don't care. Okay. If you're watching right now, you can see a parade of all these Dodger fans charged up to go play their little brother. All these people, all this energy put into going to play a team you quote unquote don't have a rivalry with. You know, the organizations may not have a rivalry with each other, but that fan base got a rivalry with this one. And Mm -hmm. you don't do that if they're just your little brother that you're not really worried about. So on my on my chat, and I'm glad you started here. On my chat, it's immediately after a win. Immediately, the number one comeback wins the parade downtown. Immediately, ah. that is consistently the number one to the point now where when the Padres win, I have a picture of that cele- that that the parade, not parade, but the celebration when the Padre fans beat the Cardinals and downtown was crazy back in 2020. I have a a beautiful picture of like all kinds of fans in downtown. And before they can even say it, as soon as the final out hit, I will just send that picture like on my way, on my way, (laughs) on my way to downtown. It is the number one thing. The second is, um, how many rings you got? That's always the, that's always my favorite comeback. Yes. Yeah. And uh, really, like, this is or this is your World Series. Beating us is your World Series. So those are the three. But the new the new one, not new, but it's been going on for about two years. Since the Padres became a thing, the number one right. thing is, oh, when's the parade downtown? When's the parade downtown? And these freaking people. And by the way, last year, remember last year I did a guy's trip to the Padres Dodgers game, Cinco de Mayo? Yeah. Uh, the Saturday game. Same thing happened. Same exact parade thing happened. That we were out and like bootlegger in the corner of some bar, and all of a sudden I looked to my right over towards fifth, and it was just a sea of Dodger fans coming through. And listen, Dodger fans travel probably better than most fan bases, and this yes. is a very short drive for them. But yeah, the whole parade downtown, yeah, like it's okay, man. Like you're you're a hundred percent right, and you're it's on Monday. We're gonna agree right away. It's okay to say that. This is a rivalry, and it's okay to say that you hate us for whatever yeah. reason. And when I say Pick us, it. I mean Padre fans. Yes. Like, do do you pod do Dodger fans find Padre fans super annoying? Yes, you can see the vitriol online. Do Dodger fans feel superior to Padres fans? Absolutely, one hundred percent. But at the end of the day, you can tell by the way the manager acts for the Dodgers. You can tell by the way. The Padre players are playing. I don't care what Adrian Gonzalez said. I completely disagreed with him. It feels different. It feels different yes. when these yes. two teams play. Yeah. And listen, I haven't been to a Giants Dodgers game in maybe 10 years. And I remember those days, like how those games are, were, you know. But this seems to me, even when you go to Dodger Stadium and the Padres are there, it feels different. It just looks this, different. It feels different. This feels different. And I can tell you by on the books now, it's statistically different because they set a single season, a single day record for attendance at Petco this weekend. 46,000. Okay. You hear that, Wave fans? 40, specifically the goalie. You leave them 46, alone. 46, until they come on the show, I won't leave them alone. 46,701. Whoever that one was, you deserve a prize. 46,000 people. Yeah. So whatever it is, whatever it is, it's on both sides. I'm just here to tell Dodger fans, it's okay to admit you like the girl that you don't want people to know you like. Mm. The secret's out. The secret's yeah. out. We know you hate to us. Yeah. 133,970 for the weekend. 46,701 both new benchmarks for a three-day series at Peco Park. So, which is like, hey, I love what Ron Fowler said five, six, seven years ago, whatever it was. He goes, oh, yeah, Dodger fans, come on in. Right. We're going to take your money, and we're going to build a team with your money. And listen, and we're not we're not spending like we used to, but that's still a thing here. I thought 
the best thing to come out of this weekend wasn't the attendance, even though the parade was a close second for me. It's the way they won these games. Pitching. And, I wasn't, and, and the way that they lost the second game, I wasn't really that mad about it, to be honest with you. That's, that's baseball. That yeah. second game is yeah. baseball. That yeah. first game, bomb win. This guy who you trade for just keeps showing up. And then you win the third game with flat-out pitching, but you're pitching over a three-game span when we were very worried about Michael King on Friday. Boy, did he oh, show. Oh, boy. Boy, did Michael King show. So over a three-day week. So did Glass now, by the way. That was like that was an old school pitching pitching duel. If you can walk away from a three day series, knowing that Mike Tyler Glasnow came out with his A game, A plus, and Michael King outdid him convincingly, mm -hmm. convincingly, and then you Darvish bookends it with what he did, looking healthy, looking strong against that lineup. Nobody was out. Nobody was hurt. One, two, three. Bang, bang, bang. This is encouraging. Again, when we started the series on Friday, no one. But on Friday, that. on Friday, real quick, when Michael King got pulled after seven, and right away the Dodgers tie it up in the eighth. You're like, oh, Ooh. come on, come on, man. Bullpen, right, yeah, right, dude, yeah. Like right away, yeah. you're like, really? You're just gonna blow this right away? Like just walk who? Walk, Matsui, who's been walking a ton of batters all of a sudden. Like you're just like, come on, man. But he, well, he, what, it looked like it was going to be bad. It looked like it was going to be real bad because he couldn't get an out. Or there was was at it all. second and third. Yes. Yeah. Because what but we he, said he on Friday was find a way to get some, get you to the seventh. So here we are. We have this discussion on Friday. Michael King gets you to the seventh, mm -hmm. and we're saying they just need one more person. They need one more person, <laughs> and then you then you run out of the bullpen, and now here it's, it looks like the wheels are coming off, and you're going, mm -hmm. oh my god. And not only did it write itself, the guy you traded for a couple of weeks, a couple of days, almost a week ago, flat game time. Let's celebrate at home plate. Yeah, on a Friday his first night. ever, his first ever uh, game as a as a Padre at home. At home, Luis Arias hits the walk off. Padres win two to one. It was awesome. And then Don Arcillo's call. Welcome to San Diego, Luis Arise. It was just great. It was a, it was a, it was an incredible. First of all, it was an incredible series because it was different. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when the Dodgers Padres play, it's a lot of runs, a lot of home runs, a lot of, a lot of big hits, a lot of things of that nature. This series was really and Saturday. Yeah, I know Hernandez hit a grand slam, but like yeah. the reason they got the on base was like walks and little bloops and they didn't it wasn't get hits. It, it wasn't hits. The Dodgers looked pretty for honestly. The, the Padres as a whole, what they did to the Dodgers this weekend was incredibly impressive. Yes, they hit the grand slam on Saturday. Yes, they only won two out of three, but they won the series. That's four straight series wins. They're now five and three against the Dodgers. The Dodgers have been kicking everybody's ass as of late, like literally just smashing teams. And yes, they've been Steam playing rolling. the bottom teams. But yeah, it was a really encouraging. What the Padres have done the last four series has been very, very encouraging because they're doing it different ways. They're winning because of pitching sometimes. They're winning because of hitting sometimes. They're doing with small bottom, ball sometimes. They're doing with home runs like yesterday. Hitting. Bottom of the lineup hitters. Now, Xander came through. Tatis came through. Cronenworth came through. But before this, our mm -hmm. biggest – our biggest Luis you Camposano. Know, right. Before this, we were saying, oh, listen, the big guys aren't hitting. Profar is keeping them alive. You got, you know, you got bottom of the lineup guys doing their thing. Here we come, big series. Here come the big bats. Here come the paychecks. The paychecks come marching in. The paychecks. And when you get a home run like that from Bogarts, again, we don't know what his deal is. Is it it's physically? Is it mentally? He switched is, bats. He just, whatever. Whatever. If that's what it takes for him to now shake out of this, because one of the things that I really felt like, we didn't go into this series saying, this is big. They got to win. It's got to be at home. Everybody had a real nonchalant approach to it. It's three games. Mm -hmm. Let's see what you got, and then we'll move on from there. And because the way that they won it, it built momentum. It built mm -hmm. energy. And, again, they won the series. Now, this is the second time you've seen the Dodgers. You've bested them both times in the series. That, Third time. That Korea counted. <laughs> fair, fair, fair. Yeah. yeah. That, that confidence builds. Because now I feel like this team is constructed better. 
It's got pieces on it. It's got big time guys, but it has an equal amount of pieces. Then last year, it felt very heavy from names. This really feels more like a team that they're building. It's on the fly and it's still being done, obviously, but it feels like this is a team being built and we're watching it come to life because I think now you've got the Rockies coming in here. Mm -hmm. If this is if this is like last year, they'll let down. They'll get swept. <laughs> or they'll lose That's what I was going to say. Rock, the Rockies after that series is like the ultimate letdown like game tonight. You got Randy Vasquez on the mound tonight. She's like, uh, I don't know. Correct. Here's what I'll say though, dude. And and this is this. Uh, if you don't agree with me, I don't know if you're paying attention. This team is just. It's better on the eye, and and the and the and the record at this point of the of the season compared to last year is worse, but it's just better. Like there, you feel good watching the team. The you energy feel like, feels different. You feel like and listen, they're one game above five hundred. They're not like tearing it up. They're 22 and 21. They're not out there going on 10 game win streaks. There's just, there's this like, it almost feels like the little guy fighting through. I don't know why. And listen, when you say that, it sounds so stupid because, because you talked about the paychecks, right? They have the guys, they have the money. They have, you Darvish is, you know, one of the most popular pitchers in baseball. And yet it feels almost like they're like the team that's not supposed to do it. Almost like we, we wrote them off me being one of them like we wrote them off and yet they're just going to fight through it and i don't think they're going to go and win 95 games this year but i still think that it's just better to watch this team than it was last year if this team their mentality and how they approach every game it's like everything we wanted for last year that's all we wanted for that correct. team last year correct but instead correct. last year and i and some of the guys are still here obviously and they're guilty of it too they, instead of like just consistently saying we're good enough we'll figure it out it's not like that anymore it's like no we have to go win we have to go play hard we have to, mm -hmm. and we have to find ways to win they're so they're so publicly different than they were last year that it's like easy to root for them and it makes you want to root for them because it makes you feel like they're trying hard to fight through their you know perceived lack of talent as a comp as compared to last year not in the game of baseball but as compared Correct. to last year Roster just, versus it, roster. Roster versus roster just feels so different. And and you know what? It starts with guys like Tatis coming out and saying, like, hey, let's go out there and play clean baseball and fight for wins, you know? And it it's like um it's like reverberating through the clubhouse. You could feel it. You could genuinely feel it. I think a lot of that feel is because the season is new. I think a lot of that feel is first year manager, clean slated for everyone, even though this guy was still in the organization, but this feels very clean slated. I don't feel like there is any carryover from last year's roster to this year's roster because they move, they talk, and they're playing different. Again, this could be being a being a, a, a quarter in, but where we are now, I honestly feel like this roster feels like it's got more fight in it. Mm -hmm. it. It just it just really does. Whether it be some of these pickups, whether it be some of these the profar signing, whatever it is, whatever it is, this team feels like. This is a team and it's not business. And I think last year, like I said, I've said this many times. Last year felt like business. Mm -hmm. This looks like a team effort. So the Padres, four consecutive series victories, five and three against the Dodgers this season, 22 and 21 on the season. You got your, you got your nerd goggles on? Uh -oh, so you got them go. handing around? I'm about to throw you the most statty stat of all time. You ready? Uh, uh, According to Elias Sports, the Padres are the first team since 1893. 18, oh. You ready? I'm going to start again. Oh. The Padres are the first team since 1893 with at least four straight starts of five innings or more and allowing two hits or fewer by a starting pitcher. Oh! 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 That's deep. That's deep. That's deep. That's deep. I saw people like talking about. I saw LV Network talking about that, and you could tell the guy reading it was like, "What am I reading right now? <laughs> like, what? What? What did I just say?" And I know I'm supposed to be impressed by this, right? Because there's an 1893 attached to it. Padres. When you are, when you're reading it, whenever you go that deep in a year and more than two stats, you lose people. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you lost. Uh, you, I just read it two times and it lost me again. All right, when we come back, Scott just texted me. He's going to jump in. This is Kaplan and Crew brought to you by the Seven Mile uh, Seven Mile Casino. SevenMileCasino.com, just minutes away from downtown San Diego and right off the 5 Freeway. Go check them out. We'll be right back. Scott joins us next. All right, everybody, welcome back to Kaplan and Crew. And he's here. Like I said, he would be here. Uh, not where I thought he would be, but here he is. Scott Kaplan joining yeah. us from the road. What's up, wow. bro? I'm doing the best I can today, boys. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what, I'm what's going on today? Can you, can you explain to everybody what you're doing? So my one of my best friends is a guy named Jeff Jacobs. And his mother... Well, let me tell you, his father's name is Erwin Jacobs. Does, does, does that name sound familiar to you guys? Do you guys know that name? Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with the Jacobs name, yes. Yeah, so Erwin is the founder of Qualcomm. And, um, and, and the mom, Joan Jacobs, she was the matriarch of their family. And last week, at 91 years old, she, she died. You know, what a life, right? I mean, 91 years old, incredible life. Um, and today, right now, I mean, this is going to be plastered all over local news tonight. And I'm sure all over the newspapers and whatever else, um, they're having a celebration of life for her at the Rady Shell, which, by the way, I've never been to the Rady Shell. I cannot believe this is the first time I'm going to the Rady Shell. And it's for a celebration of life, not for some like killer concert, you know? Yeah. So never been, but going down, heading down. And uh, I know that this is a, a, a kind of so off topic. Were you, did you end up at Wonderfront yesterday? Okay, so here's what happened. Yeah, remember I told you guys on Friday that what, what sounded like a good idea would be go down to San Diego, go to downtown San Diego on Sunday, um, yeah. see what happens with the Padre game, and then mm -hmm. get done with the Padre game and then go over to Wonderfront. So what happened was Rachel and then Browner was like, us. you don't got, you don't got no passes. How, yeah, no how's, how, how's SD cap going to go to wonder from no passes. And then he's like, I wait, had, you'll find a way in. We know you, I, I had no passes to the game. I, I had no tickets. I had no credentials. I had nothing. So we get to the game and a friend of mine, we're, we're, we're like rushing through traffic. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Rachel. You guys are nice saying blenders. Hi. <laughs> nice blenders. They said, yep, we're both rocking them. <laughs> um, so we, we got down to the Padre game yesterday. How many sunrooms in this car? What kind of car is this? <laughs> This is Rachel's car, so you know it's bomb. It's got to be. They got two. They got, I never seen a sunroof for the back seat. Nobody cares Damn, about who's in the back seat. Well, what can I tell you, man? This is, uh, geez, this guy. My man, learn to drive, bro. Come on. Anyway. Really um, working. So I, so, <laughs> By the way, if you're so listening I, to this, y'all need yeah. to come watch this. <laughs> yeah, you got to watch on YouTube. This is. So So here's here's the deal. So we yesterday afternoon, or yesterday during the morning, we went on a Mother's Day walk in La Jolla, where Rachel's Ooh, like, I've never Mother's known Day, about Rachel. this. Happy Mother's Day. We never did this walk called the Coast Walk. I knew of it. She didn't. She saw it on Instagram. She's like, do you know of this walk? I'm like, yes. Yeah. She's like, let's go. Okay. So we went in the morning. We got done. We went out for brunch after that. How was it? And then it was great. Oh, it was an awesome walk. It's a great place to walk. It really is. Um, insane views. Anyway, so we got done. And then what we did was we... Um, we then got back to her house and she's like, let's go do it. Let's go to downtown San Diego. I texted both of you guys, seeing if anybody wanted to go down and have a beer. So we went yeah. to downtown. Oh my God. I'm just pulling into downtown San Diego right now. And dude, I see it every day in LA. I do. I see it all the time in LA. We're getting off here at Imperial. Dude, the homeless problem here. What's up, my dog? How are you, brother? It's so bad, man. God, it just saddens me. So anyway. Um, so we, uh, we, we, um, we decided to go to downtown San Diego yesterday. We took the coaster from, um, from Sorrento Valley. We got down to Santa Fe station and then we grabbed the trolley and went over to, uh, Petco park. Didn't have any tickets. So a friend of mine texted me a picture of his tickets and I walked up to the guy to get in and I'm like, Oh, you know what, dude, we left this the ballpark on the other side. We just came walk around. I figured we just we decided we're going to come back in because, well, did you get your ticket scanned over at the other side? I'm like, no, we forgot. We didn't know we were coming back in. He's like, well, then you can't come back in. So tried to BS my way into getting us into the game. <laughs> didn't happen. Um, 
And then I was looking around for like, you know, where could I just kind of sneak in? And it just it wasn't even worth it. So Rachel said, let's go to this bar. Now, she is going to be very upset with me if I tell you the name of the bar we went to. Why is because that? It's her fa- because it's her favorite place. It's a poorly and- kept secret, Rachel. Okay, everybody, kn- every, those, everybody knows the bar that you guys are at. Let, let me hear. What bar? <laughs> what bar? I don't know the name, but I know exactly where it's at. It's right next to I, the I, Epic, Epic Brewing. Yeah, I only yeah. know of it because that was the same place that we went to. That was the way to go, Nick. That was the place way to go, yeah. Nick. You yeah. know? Um, so I, I don't remember what it was called back then, but it was an Irish or a, a British pub way back when. And now yeah. it's got some other name. And, dude, we sat there on the balcony overlooking Gallagher Square. And mm-hmm. you don't you don't even need to go to the game. Like, you yeah. literally do not need to go to the game. We were sitting above Gallagher Square. We had the giant monitor um, over the stage at Petco Park. People pay money to go into the ballpark and spend a lot of money on tickets and spend a lot of money on beer and food and stuff. We sat in a restaurant drinking cheaper beer, eating better food, and watching the entire game, and it was a blast. It was awesome. Mm-hmm. So I won't say the name of the, the bar because Rachel thinks I'm going to be giving away some little local secret. But that bar is always so. packed for right. games. It wasn't packed. It wasn't <laughs> packed, good. dude. Yeah. It was great. Well, it's always packed pregame. That's for sure. Always Alex says it's packed pregame. Yes, that's what, that's what she assumed. She yeah, assumed yeah. it was packed pregame. So anyway, so we hung out. We watched the game. The game ended. We probably gave it about another 45 minutes or so until everybody was making their way out of the park. And then we decided, let's go to Wonderfront. Now, we go to Wonderfront. We have no tickets. Okay. And I'm not even like making calls or trying. And I'm going to stand by the entrance until I figure out how to get us in. But not mm-hmm. Rachel. See, she works in a different way. Okay. She works differently. So she found some guy in front of Wonderfront scalping wristbands, right? And this guy had the uh, general admission wristbands for $60 a wristband, or he had the VIP wristbands for $150 a wristband. We bought two uh, general admission wristbands from this guy. And I'm like, dude, these better not be counterfeit. And he's like, nope, because they're they're perfect. And, you know, I just figured, like, he's got a friend who works at security. That guy's stealing things. He's handing them to this guy, and these guys are making bank. So, um, we bought the, what my guy, my guy. Yeah. Oh, Rachel's theory is that he's buying off, off of people when they're leaving. I don't think mm-hmm. that's the case. I don't think that's the case. Did it take you um, two hours to get black, in? Black guy, white no, guy. No time. Hey, black guy, black guy. Bought him off black mm-hmm. guy. It didn't okay. take you two hours to get in. Cause Browner said that people were waiting two hours to get in. No, it didn't take, so it took no time to get Friday, in. Friday on Friday. Yeah. yeah. The will call line two right. hours. You, you had tickets at local? No, people who I know who were there. And this is what I'm saying. I didn't experience yeah. it firsthand, so I can't give you intricate details. But yeah. what I can say is people who I know that went there on Friday to see T Pain mm-hmm. missed T Pain because oh, of the really? two hour wait just to get your will, just to get your, your wristbands out of will call, bro. I, um, I don't know if that's the case because all we did, so we had these friends that sent us a, uh, uh, they had like a, a, a promo code. And the promo code, was to um, to buy tickets at a lesser price. I want to say the ticket price was what was it, eighty bucks? I think for the with one the day. Like yeah, with a discount for like a one day pass it was like eighty six bucks. So we didn't do that because it was too complicated to buy them online. So there, you had to fill in like twenty different things. So we we were like screw it. So we literally we bought scalped wristbands right in front of Wonderfront, and mm-hmm. then we just sort of we got in the middle of the crowd. We. We didn't even like obsess with getting up into the VIP. We didn't, we didn't like care. We just, cause by that time, dude, we were already, we were drinking beers and we were having a nice time. We didn't really need nice. to feel. Well, who'd like you see yesterday? Yeah. Rachel showed me how it was for what she calls a regular person. Regular people. Not, 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 not having SDF. VIP. Rachel, he can't take that two days in a row though. So be careful. Right. Yeah. I, I can't take that two days in a row. Browner said, I know it was hard for me. It was hard for me to not like be VIP and you know have tickets all handled and things prepared before I go. It was hard. Um, anyway, so uh, so we we did the Padre game from up above the Padre game up above Gallagher Square. Walked over to Wonderfront. We saw um, those DJs. I'm trying to remember what they were called. I don't remember those guys. Is it Polo and Pan? Yeah, Polo and Pan. Yeah. Yeah, those what guys were. Give me, give me a taste. Give me a I taste. Don't, the, the music was good. It's just it's funny to see two white guys sitting there acting like they're listening to something on their headphones and then doing like like lame dance moves. You know, give me a taste. Give me a taste of the sound. I, I, I couldn't even begin to because I really don't even remember it. Um, Tell Rachel she can. Run. She's a rock star. She can do see. it. What are we? 
okay, we're we're pulling in here. This is going to be uh, interesting to see how LA Cap gets a good parking spot here right now. Let's yeah, we're going to watch SD Cap in action. Well, I don't know what's going on here. Lot B. I guess if you pull over in here, I guess. I mean, roll wherever we go. I mean, but where are you planning on going? Why would you have to okay. pay? It's a, Any, it's, it's, a, it's a it's a celebration of life. It should be. I know. I don't parking. understand. I don't understand. I know. Well, anyway, so oh god, this is going to get dangerous. She got it. Um, okay, so then <laughs> what is that? Oh. <laughs> what is that? Mad Max break out in the parking lot. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. No. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm in. I, listen, the boss got it all handled. Boss got it all Focus handled. on the show. Focus on the show. Focus on the show. Tell us what else is going so on. So anyway, so anyway, so then we, we saw those DJs. Then we saw this guy, Marcus. I can't think of his last name, but he was a um, Aurelius. guy from, no, not Marcus Aurelius. He didn't turn his back. No. Um, this guy was a, um, just be careful. What's up, Skipper? Okay. Yeah. So anyway, we um, we uh, went to the uh, Marcus, whatever the guy's name was. I don't remember his name. He was from South Carolina. He was great. Yeah, it's full. He was great, and um, kind of like an Almond Brothers sort of a vibe to him. He was awesome. Mm -hmm. And then we saw uh, Mount Joy. Do you guys know who Mount Joy is? No, kind of. I know who Almond Joy is. Well, they all uh, listen. I know who Almond Joy is too. They all. Everybody was raving about these guys. Um, and everybody in the crowd knew every word to every song. Did you I stick didn't. around for Beck? We did not stick around for Beck. We did not stick around for Beck. We decided to bounce on Beck. Um, I only know like one Beck song, Loser, and that's all I know. Mm -hmm. Rachel says she knows a lot more. So we bounced after Beck or after, well, we kind of bounced in the, it was, dude, it was so crowded. We were in the middle of the crowd and it was super claustrophobic. Yeah. yeah. Was it hot? Uh, it wasn't hot, but it wasn't like freezing cold either. It was actually quite nice. Uh, so before we lose you, give us give us your uh, your your take. I know you're like I got to talk about Dodgers Padres. I got to talk about everybody passing, everybody that passed this weekend. Because I saw you tweeting about AJ Smith. What's what you got, man? Before you gotta go do this. You thing. know the the AJ Smith thing is really interesting because yesterday when I was at Wonderfront, this guy came up to me and he goes, "Hey, man, um, I was watching your post earlier today about AJ Smith, and I'm sure you guys saw that post." I had to go back into some YouTube to find that. But um, we, uh, AJ Smith, first of all, I didn't realize he was sick. I didn't know that he'd been battling prostate cancer for the last seven years. I didn't know that. Um, I also didn't know that his son was the assistant general manager of the Atlanta Falcons. I mean, it is like if you have a parent Nepotism, who works baby. in the NFL, you can get into the NFL. The if you don't top, have a parent, baby. it is so hard to get into the NFL if you don't have a, a family member in the NFL. Um, so anyway, so um, I will say this, you know, A.J. Smith, tough guy, hard guy to work with. Um, but but at times he could be playful. In fact, if you looked at that video when he, he kind of pointed over at me and he kind of like like I got you kind of a thing. And, you know, we had a really great relationship. He just did not like being pressed. You know, he kind of he wanted to be in control. And before he became a general manager, John Butler was the GM. And John used to call me. He'd be pissed if I didn't freaking say exactly what those guys. Okay. If, if, if those guys were like, they had a thing that they wanted to control the media and they were trying to control everything we were saying. And so um, AJ was a tough guy. He's kind of a prickly guy, but he was a great talent evaluator. He just, honestly, I think his legacy, I think his legacy, wow, is going to be, he is the guy that couldn't get along with Marty Schottenheimer. And because he couldn't get along with Marty Schottenheimer, they fired a 14 and two coach. I mean, I really think that's going to be his legacy. I know a lot of people put up, um, you know, that his legacy is that he uh, drafted Eli Manning number one and then traded that pick and got Phillip Rivers. But I think his legacy is going to be that he, you know, he really essentially he won. He pushed Marty Schottenheimer out. And, um, and that was a big loss. It was a win for, for AJ, and it was a loss for Marty, and it was a loss for the organization. And you know, it's, it's why a guy like Jim Steig, who was so great at what he did, eventually left the Chargers because he was a Marty guy. He wasn't an AJ guy. Yeah. And so I was very sad. I mean, listen, I don't wish that upon anybody in their family. I mean, it's inevitable, obviously. But still, it was, it was sad to see that uh, AJ Smith passed because it kind of came from out of nowhere, you know?
Yeah. Um, so what about Padres Dodgers? How much of that did you intake this weekend? I took a lot of it in. I, I, um, I'll say this, you know, in LA, boy, everybody likes to make downplay the Padres. Oh, they, you know, George calls them the gutty little Padres. Guess what? You know what? Maybe that's not an insult. Maybe that's actually a, a great name for the Padres. Maybe this Padres team does actually have guts. Didn't last year. Does that seems to have it this year. I mean, what did the Dodgers do this weekend? All they did was hit one grand slam, and that was mm-hmm. all their offense all weekend. And granted, you know, Otani didn't play yesterday, and I guess yeah. wasn't feeling right on Saturday. But seriously, the Padres right now, um, Dodgers may run away with the division, but what if the Padres were to face the Dodgers in a playoff series and could feel confident the way, that they could beat them? By the way, when Joe – when John Joe, when Sedano says the gritty little Padres, me and Browner talked about in the first segment, yeah, we like that. Because yeah, last year we right. had confident, cocky little Padres, and we hated them. Yeah, yeah, right. You know, like so, yeah. like I like little uh, gritty, fighty, you know, go get them kind of Padre attitude. I much prefer that. Yeah, and we too. talked about early on, this, and we talked about early on the show as well the, the idea that they're not, there's not a rivalry, even though the Dodger fans are trying to throw a parade here is hilarious. Like it's yeah. okay to admit you hate us. It's okay to yeah, admit. Did you see that? You know, I like, did. What are you doing? Right. How yeah. about this boat behind me, by the way? Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. No, that's okay. I'm like, <laughs> look at this boat. What a boat, man. Damn, wow. dude. You finna get dude. on that? I would. I am mean, fitting to get on it. I don't know if anybody's going to allow me to get on it. Rachel's saying hi, guys. Oh. Hey, Rachel. Hello. Hello. Yeah, no, I, I, I saw that whole parade. Listen, I've seen Mets fans do the same thing. Um, certain fan bases can pull it off. You know? Certain fan bases can pull it off. The Dodger fans did. Give them credit. But, yeah. I mean, listen, they, they – they, they may not come down here because of a rivalry. They may come down here because they're like, hey, it's San Diego. It's awesome. Let's go down and enjoy the bars, enjoy the restaurants, enjoy the ballpark. And, um, and man, uh, yeah, after the game was over yesterday, people were walking the streets, and they were all cheering to Dodger fans. They're like, what are you guys cheering about? You guys just lost two out of three to the gutty mm-hmm. little Padres. Yeah. Uh, that's what I was telling Browner. Like, my group chat, oh, automatically, as soon as the Padres win and beat the Dodgers, what time is the parade? What time's the parade? Yeah. Like, that's the comeback now. What time's the parade? This is your World Series. It's like this inferiority complex that they think we have over this team. But it's like, listen, man, uh, you know, we. I, th- I think most Padre fans understand that we're probably not going to win this division. And we're okay with it. But we're going right. to, I don't, I don't, that that don't mean we're not going to be competitive and try and go out and and, yeah, and, and re- replicate 2022 again. Right. And we can still win, by the way. You don't have to win yeah. the division to have a successful season by I mean that World Series. You can get in without winning the division. So. We're all right, good. Listen, We're good. I, I gotta go. I will see you guys tomorrow. We'll get deeper into all this. I apologize. Uh, just I have to be here for this. And uh, everybody have a great day. All right. All right. Later. Adios. Later. Celebrate Bye, the Rachel. life. All right. That's Scott Kaplan checking in from yeah. the Shell in. Is it down there? Yeah, downtown, right? That's. Not, I mean, technically, he wasn't at the Shell. He was getting there. Uh, He's by the, the way, arena. I don't want to like toot my own horn, but my car right. has that uh double sunroof too. And it's nice. On oh. Saturday night, we went to a graduation party, and I had a few drinks, so I didn't drive. And my wife drove home, uh, and my mother-in-law was riding shotgun. We were all coming from a family graduation party, and I've never sat in the back seat of my car um, until nice. Saturday. And I was like, "Yo, this is nice." And probably is, you know, five drinks, and I'm like, "Yeah, this is nice." <laughs> I didn't know it was this cool. <laughs> Can we open this? Good. Oh, this is all- no, I'm always driving with it all the way open. And then, but I never sit back there. So I never get to enjoy it. So nice. anyways, yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's all that. You don't see that every day. That's that's a yeah. new feature that they just started putting in cars. Yeah. But then it, when you want to open the glass itself, it only goes regular. So the glass uh, goes all the way, but the whole sunroof doesn't open. It just, gotcha. it stops right there. Yeah. Don't Teslas have that in some those SUVs? Mm-hmm. I think it's the same thing. I don't know if it's sunroof yep. or not, but. Anyways, all right, Browner. Well, Padres, Dodgers, uh, that's done. That's wrapped. Um, but now here come the Rockies, one of the worst teams. Are they the worst team in baseball? If not, they're they close. Might be the... Let me check real quick. The whole league overall, who's the worst team in baseball? They're close. They are one yeah. game better than the Miami Marlins. Uh, but they've won four in a row. They've won four in a row. Tonight, not the sexiest of pitching matchups. Randy Vasquez against a guy that's 0-6 on the season in Dakota Hudson. Uh, Game starts at oh, 640. Pod, the old, old, Dakota got, old Dakota got more walks than strikeouts. 
And he's got a six yeah. ERA. You know what that means? Because last year, you know what that means? We he's about to have eight innings of no, shutout baseball. Two hits. Yeah. This year, can we not? Can we not do that? I, can we not follow up? I, I think this is the indication. This will be an indicator of how things are going to go this year. You have a successful series against a really good team. You've won a bunch of, you've won four series in a row, four or five series in a row. And now you're getting yourself in a situation where this is a must win. Mm -hmm. It's not a must win because your season's on the line. It's a must win because you have to beat a team this bad. You have to beat a pitcher with a six ERA with more walks than, than, than strikeouts. Because on prize picks, I'm going walks. I'm betting all uh, uh, more on all my walks tonight. Let me let me. I'm I'm gonna check it out during the commercial break because I think I'm going yeah. all walks tonight. Uh, well, we are right. brought to you by Prize Picks, and the promo code is Great Friends. And what does that mean? That means that they'll match your first deposit up to one hundred dollars when you sign up. You can scan the QR code if you're watching. Uh, but PricePicks.com slash Great Friends. Who's whose walks are you looking for? Like Tatis? All Padre walks. Padre. Tatis Demon half a walk. Taking it. Taking it. I'm taking all of them. All right. When we come back, let's get into what I'm sure Browner was very much into, which was a wild weekend in the NBA. Also, the NFL is about to release their schedule, and we already know who's going to play opening night. It's the Chiefs, but against who? We'll tell you next. All right, everybody. Hey, a little halftime. Let's see. Did I did I make it back? Did I not make it back? I'm recording all of this before we get on the air. Um, quick timeout to just mention our friends at Prize Picks. Download the Prize Picks app. Use our code Great Friends. And here's why: with the WNBA season tipping off this week, I've never said that in 20 plus years of the WNBA being in existence. I think it's almost 30. I've never said, "Hey, the WNBA is tipping off this week." But with Caitlin Clark and the phenomenon that she has become. She's that interesting. The league has become that much more interesting. But for me, it's just another opportunity to play prize picks. They've got Caitlin Clark in her season debut going for half a point. Her normal number would be 21 and a half points. I think she'll score more than 21 and a half in her opening, uh, in her debut. So they're giving you a gift at half a point. Caitlin Clark for half a point, put it together with something else. Let's, let's all win here. Look at this. One point equals one win. There she is, Caitlin Clark. So I'm going to play Caitlin Clark. I'm probably likely to put her together with my dart throwing phenomenon, Luke Littler. And uh, cause he wins for me like 75% of the time to me, what they're doing with Caitlin, that's a 100% of the time. So I'm going to put Caitlin together with Luke and together we're going to have a winner this week on prize picks, download the prize picks app, use our code, great friends, and they're going to match your first deposit 100% up to a hundred dollars. And the game is so easy. You take Caitlin Clark more, or less on the points. It's really that simple. The game is so easy. It's so fun. It will change the way you watch sports. Download the Prize Picks app. Use our code Great Friends. We appreciate you guys always supporting all of our partners. Let's get back to the show. All right, everybody. Welcome back to Kaplan and Crew with just the crew for the remainder of today. As Scott's out at the celebration of life for the Jacobs family. Uh, Grande and Brown Man with you here on a Monday, the Monday after the Padres beat the Dodgers two out of three, and as the Rockies come to town for another three-game series. Uh, before we get into the next thing, just want to remind everybody, we are brought to you by Mountain Trust Realty. Give Gary Cooper a call, 858-376-1299. 858-376-1299. Gary Cooper at Mountain Trust Realty. If you're looking to buy a home or sell a home, He's the man to call, and the great thing about him, I know I always say this, the great thing about Gary is when you call, he answers the phone. So it's incredible uh, customer service there as well. Not just realty.com. Mm -hmm. All right, this weekend, Browner, there was a ton of, uh, obviously, NBA action. I do remember telling, not on the show, I have a buddy of mine who's like super, super, super into the NBA, and he was like, what the hell happened to the Nuggets, man? Like, Nuggets are trash. Like, they're, they're, they're you know, because he's a big Laker fan, so he's just pissed off. And I was like, I will bet you whatever that the Nuggets still win this series. Like, I just don't trust the Wolves yet the way, same way I don't trust the Thunder yet. Like, you got to really prove it to me. And it's not so much that I don't believe they can. It's just like with these younger teams, there's learning curves. It's very rare in the NBA that a team just comes in and just, boom, all right, champions, right? So the Nuggets now are tied two to two. 
And on the other side, Browner, and I think the one that's taking all the headlines, the Knicks are now two and two because they they got about five guys on their roster that can actually play basketball right now because they're all hurt. Yeah. And I'm sure you in took all of this. You, what? Is that a real question? Of course I took it all in. No, it's not a question. It was just more of a, right? I would. Uh, one of the things I would say when I took. I What's took distracting Titus, you, by the way? I was and why are you sitting now? Walk-in. What happened to I'm, I'm what happened standing? I'm, I'm alternating. I'm alternating. I'm alternating. I'm allowed to alternate, ain't I? Did you sit because Scott was on the show and you didn't want you wanted to save it for tomorrow? You wanted to save your diss track for tomorrow? Probably. Probably. I'm going yeah. in harder tomorrow. It was yeah. a warm-up. It was a warm-up. It was an intro. Okay. It was a, a okay. uh, interlude, as they would say. Uh I thought this weekend in I thought this weekend in basketball told a very interesting story. We are always too quick to bury somebody being the nuggets. And two, at some point, next man up doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And that's what's happening to the Knicks. Like, y- the average NBA team has eight real NBA bona fide players on it. Eight guys who can actually play if you put them in the game. In the playoffs, the rotation goes down to six, maybe seven, okay, depending on how good the team is. The Knicks have four players injured. Mm-hmm. They have four guys who ain't – four guys who – I think they account for about 50 points are gone. Not coming back. Out of here. Not coming back. Not coming back. So the idea that people are like, oh, the Knicks are tired. Like, no, they're injured. I don't think this has anything to do with the the Knicks now looking to be out of gas against the Pacers is because at high intensity levels, you can only play six guys for so long. They're playing four guys, and the other two guys they put in the game are like, listen, you got a minute out there, and y'all finna alternate mm-hmm. this minute, and then everybody else back on the ship. So I, I just think the Knicks are out of gas because they're hurt, not because they're playing a lot of minutes. If that makes any sense. Well, why are they hurt? That's what that's what the new argument is, right? Well, Mitchell Robinson always gets hurt, whether people like it or not. Julius Randle always gets hurt. Remember, rookie year, but he's like, been hurt. They were they they got better without him. Arguably, one can say that they got they yeah. did get better without him. Uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich got hurt physically in a game that wasn't yeah. wear and tear, he collided with somebody. So, the injury Mitchell Robinson was pulled out of the air by Joe LP <laughs> by both his legs. So, these are physical things that happened on the court. That, that what that happened to the Knicks isn't wear and tear, it's guys getting hurt because Ananobi might be wearing each tear. other. Ananobi, Ananobi. Might be wearing Ananobi tear. Ananobi I would chalk that one up. Maybe I will give you Ananobi, but the other three, this is you and Brunson. Hit. And Brunson's clearly not 100 percent since he remember he left. Was it game two or three? Ankle and ankle and knee. Yeah, right. And that was just. But then you watch the videos. You're like, where did he get hurt? Like, right. What, what what happened? So that like yeah. And the thing about the thing about that is, listen, I was complaining because because Darvin Ham wasn't given Austin Reeves 40 minutes. So I'm not going to sit here and blame Tom Thibodeau for putting Josh Hart in for 48 minutes. If Josh Hart's going to play with no pun intended with all heart and be the pulse of that team, then go for it. You know, it is what it is. Cuz what are the chances of the Knicks advancing if he's playing these guys 35 minutes and all of a sudden zero. Right. So it's like you you got to you you got to live and die with what got you there. You know, all of a sudden, you're not going to change the formula all of a sudden. Yeah, people cut their rotations down because it's freaking January. But now, now's the grind, dude. The NBA playoffs is so freaking long. Do people realize that? NBA really playoffs long. are like two three months. months long. Yeah, yeah, two months. You know, I'm exaggerating. But like, starts in April, ends in June. Right. This is a, by the time the finals are over, there'll be dudes that haven't picked up a basketball in like 10 weeks. The right. guys that didn't make the playoffs, they've already gone to Cancun and Europe and Australia <laughs> and Fiji and Hawaii. Like, dude, they've been all over the world by the time the playoffs are done. It is insane yeah. how long this is. It is a freaking grind. These things happen. And with the Knicks, it's like there's also the Knicks curse, in my opinion. Something's bad got to go. Something bad's got to go. The Knicks, with the Knicks, man, it's just one of those things. Uh, it's been a very entertaining series, though. And you're watching guys that people are not used to seeing Familiar on national with, television. Yeah. Tyrese Halliburton, one of the best players in basketball. Some people are getting to see that now. You know, 
You, Tyrese Halburn probably hasn't been on a nationally televised game since the in-season tournament championship. Since the bubble championship, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's so, just one of those I, things, man. I, I I think the nation being able to see this Knicks story be told is good for the NBA. I think anytime you have a Knicks team that without a superstar has a guy rise up, like when they had Lynn Sanity, if people remember that mm-hmm. a, a while ago. Like New York has had moments within the last 20 years where – the league feels more interesting because New York is good. They don't have good teams. They have yeah. interesting moments. And this is because I don't think this team is good. I think this is an interesting moment. And one of the things you brought up with time is interesting because Josh Hart, is only his only benefit is if he plays 40 minutes. Because mm-hmm. Josh Hart statistically on 30 to 35 minutes a game, it's not impressive. But if you leave him out there for 40 to 42 minutes, he could get you a triple double. He can, he looks like a shorter version of Draymond Green mm-hmm. if you just leave him out there and let him kind of find his way throughout the game. And right. so T- Tom Thibodeau is famous for overplaying his guys, but his guys reward him with success because they are big minute guys. Like Joakim Noah in, in short bursts, not very good. You play mm-hmm. him 40 to 44 minutes, he's fantastic because he can mm-hmm. get a feel for the game. Similar to Josh Hart, Jalen Brunson shooting. 25 to 30 times a game once he gets a feel for his opponent you can't you can't really slow him down you just hope he misses and so i like what they've done the 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 thing that has me concerned the most is what i saw uh minnesota turn into uh the pumpkin came out cinderella Mm -hmm. packed Mm -hmm. it up Mm -hmm. because carl anthony towns no show rudy i forgot rudy gobert didn't play in game two that's why they looked so good because watching (laughs) him play in game three and four i'm like can your wife have another baby Cause yeah. buddy, you get out of here, man. Like, talk about somebody who needs to hurt something. Pull a hamstring, Rudy. To help the team and help yourself. Go, go, get maternity leave, Rudy. Get maternity. <laughs> leave. Uh, and it's also Nikola Jokic started playing like the MVP again the past two games. That also helps. Yeah, yeah. So I, Anthony Edwards getting forty four points yesterday. Fantastic, but you need somebody else because him and Joker pretty much canceled each other out. But when mm-hmm. Aaron Gordon goes 10 for 10 to start the game and Jamal mm-hmm. Murray gets you 20, I think 18 or 20 points and no one else does anything but Nas Reed gets you 11 off the bench, you're cooked. You're cooked. Uh, there's that saying, you know, and it, you see it in like movies all the time when someone's getting bullied. Bully a bully, right? Go go right. bully a bully. And in the movies and the TV shows, the bully always backs down and cowards. Like, it turns out he was a coward the whole time. Yeah. Uh, that's what the Wolves did to the Nuggets. But then the Nuggets are like, no, no, we're actually a bully. And we're, we're going right. to fight we, back. Like, we were surprised we that you, yeah, we were surprised and you got us. But now it's like, well, hold on a second. We got the MVP. We're, we're, and he doesn't care about anything. You know, like, he doesn't yeah. care about nothing, dude. You could put that, that, honestly, you might, you can put, and this is like a complete stupid statement, but you could put Nikola Jokic on the court one versus five. I don't think he would act any different. Like, that's the kind of player he is. He's just like, yeah, whatever. Let's go. Let's play. It, this guy don't even watch TV. I'm convinced. All he does is yeah. race them little horse chariot things and hang mm-hmm. out with his brothers and, and his kid and his wife. I I don't think he does anything else because nothing seems to phase him. Nothing seems to phase him. He was out there hooping because now Did they need see... to. They, Go ahead. They need to resort to this tactic, and I think more teams should. If he's going to score 50, let him score 50. He can't outscore all five of us. But if we I mean, let him get the, 15 assists. That's, yeah. Yeah, and do some of the assists he's getting are just like wait, what? What how? 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 It's crazy. Um, here is the ending of the first half, which was incredible uh for oh the Nuggets God. and terrible for the Wolves. Put it the other end, and he tries and he gets it to go. Beating the clock. Cord length. It's intercepted. Murray good at the go. Go! 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 Big time three. Oh. Uh, the that, the Nuggets that, that was, scored nine points in twenty seconds. That sequence, you also have to understand. I would I would say it was eleven because you took two away. Actually, you took four away from Minnesota because the the intercepted pass that ended up in a half court mm-hmm. shot, the steal that ended up in a dunk, which is five straight points, and then they had scored before that. So. That game was over when he made that a half-court three. Yes, yeah. it was more competitive in the third quarter. Like, 
But they were they had fought to get back down by 10. You're coming down, you get a bucket here, you down eight. We ready to party in the second half. We coming out, you know, we at home. We got the momentum now going into halftime. You turn the ball over, and then that's one of the dumbest inbounds passes I've seen with almost no time left on the clock. You one just point, threw it to them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they scored eight points in 20 seconds, and they ended up losing the game by eight. Here is Anthony Edwards. Here's Anthony Edwards after the game. Anthony Edwards is becoming, I think, a lot of people's like favorite player remaining. He may not oh, be yeah. your favorite player. Like he's not my favorite player, but he's definitely becoming one of my favorite players to watch now that the Lakers are gone. Merciless, merciless, merciless mercifully, mercifully, thankfully. Here's Anthony Edwards after the game, who's not going to stop talking. Anthony, did you you uh, have any words with the uh, Jamal or any of the uh, Nuggets at the end of the game? There looked like you oh yeah yeah. I just told his ass. Um, that's what we we love that. Keep keep talking that. That's what we like. Well, I love it. You know, so you know he ain't say nothing back, but I'm pretty sure you heard me. They heard me. Yeah, we live for that. We live for that. I think he does. I don't know if the rest yeah. of his team does. Let me tell you something right now. Because I don't know if Carl Anthony to, Towns they, does. They need to surround that kid because he's a child. He's 22 with other people who think like him. Because Carl, Town, Carl Anthony Towns talks like that. He don't act and play like that. Rudy Gobert don't even talk like that, and he don't play like that either. Mm -hmm. So Jaden Daniels plays like that energy. Mike Conley plays like that energy. These other two dudes... Carl Anthony Towns is a fraud, and, and mm -hmm. Rudy Gobert is just good on defense. Like, he got the ball a couple times on offense under the basket, and I went, oh, He shot pass the ball it. five times. You know, he's not really there for – we know what he's there for. And one of them was a putback. So, yeah. it, that – that Anthony Edwards is a superstar. Yes. And the world is now getting an opportunity to see him at this level against the best. They need to clean that team up. I still think they have a chance to win the series if Cat actually plays, you know, decent. Yeah. You need him to – he got to do something. He did nothing. You got to give him something. But Ant's been a revelation. The The problem with the NBA is that they have a lot of foreign – some of their foreign players are their best players. Like, for instance, what's happening with the Oklahoma City-Dallas series, no one's really watching that. No one's watching Oh, it's that. like the NBA TV game. Even though it's not it, it on NBA has, TV, that's just the vibe. It has no draw. It has no. It's the it's the series I'm interested in the least. It has it's the no one, draw. It's the me. one seed. It's the it's one, the one seed. five, and I have no interest in it at all whatsoever. Okay. Uh, Browner, I, this is why I wanted to talk about this uh, Nuggets Wolves thing. Is Anthony Edwards the next Michael Jordan? No, no, I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't it's also, this is just like the dumbest thing that, and you know, I always rail about this with the NBA, right? That nobody in the NBA that covers the NBA knows how to cover the NBA because they all need to be like, who's the MVP? Is he the next? Is he the, is he the next Jordan? Is he the next Jordan? Is he the MVP? Here's Charles he Barkley. Goat? Is he the goat? Yeah, here's Charles Barkley. Who people been? And please, America, please stop the Michael Jordan stuff. This guy's had one good playoff run. And he's a great – I think he's going to be a great player. He's a really nice kid. Uh, we root for him. We want him to be – Is he close? No, hell no. Close to who? Close to who? They both black. You're not close to Mike? He's not close to Michael <clears throat> Jordan. At 23? I'm Michael Jordan was getting – He remember, he was scoring like – I'm just asking. At 23, no, hey, 23 Mike, love, at 23, I'm, I'm just asking. Do not do that. You know You know he's what, nice. honestly, and this is not disrespectful. He's nice. I'm not disrespectful. He is very nice. But his he's body close. type and the way he plays – to me, reminds me more of D. Wade, young D. Wade, when he was carrying that team, when he had Lamar Odom, and he was going through the, the playoffs for the first time. It, not, it reminds me of all that. They, all I want to say is, man, He's why close. can't we just let people do their thing and watch, the, watch them? <laughs> why do we have to say, well, he's like, I'm not telling you, I'm talking about like, yeah. Cause you know he's why? the next Michael Jordan. You no, know, because you know why? Because you all paved the way for us. That's why. What does that mean, Chuck? Chuck I mean, Shaq, man. what does that mean? Just I'm with Chuck on this one. I, Anthony Edwards is awesome to watch. Let's just leave it at that. Let's leave it at that. To say he's the next Michael Jordan is it's just preposterous, man. This is what we've done to sports in general from a from a broadcaster, uh, a talking head like ESPN, Fox Sports One situation. This is what we've done. We've com everything has to be compared to something. Mm -hmm. With just watching him play is good enough. Like to me, honestly. This is what soured LeBron's career for 
uh, across the board. This is what divided fans of watching him and being able to enjoy him because this idea of the pursuit of Michael Jordan. Now, to do this to Anthony Edwards and saying that he's the next Michael Jordan is foolish. Like, let not saying that he can't be. I'm saying mm-hmm. let him play. He's 22 mm-hmm. years old, man. Like, let it go. This thing that and, and like, people say, oh, Jalen Brunson's the greatest Nick ever. Bro, he won a playoff series. Like, have y'all ever heard of Patrick Ewing? Carmelo Anthony? This guy's the uh, Bernard King? Now I sound like, uh, 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 what's his name on first day? <laughs> Mad Dog. Yeah. Like, stop it. Jalen Brunson's story is awesome. He won Walt a playoff play? round. You ever seen Walt Frazier play? <laughs> like, Cl- uh, Clyde the Clyde. Like, bro, he won a playoff series. And now he's 2-2 two to two in the second round. Like, relax. Relax. You can't. Old- you, you, but you can't. You can't. Because that's. It goes back to the fan base, bro. Like that fan base will not ever relax. I love the Knicks. And thus, I love the Knicks and thus fan base. I love the them. media has to do the same thing. This like and, and and I what I do like about when it gets down to the nitty-gritty now, like for real. You I watched a little bit of uh I watched the intro today of first take. And Steve and Stephen A's like my Knicks. My like at least the bias is out there, right? At least the bias yeah, is out yeah. there. At least they're not they're hiding it. All everybody's a Knicks fan on television, everybody. And you could feel it. That's why it's amazing. It is genuinely like amazing. What Mike Breen does, the announcer, he's the regular Knicks play-by-play guy. I ne- you never would know that. You couldn't you tell. Watch. You, you tell. never would know that Mike Breen was the everyday Knicks announcer. Honestly, you could never tell. I just I, watching the way that the, again, I love the Knicks fan base. I don't know how that translates to when they're Yankee fans or when they're Giants fans. I love when they're Knicks, when they're being, when Knicks fans are being Knicks fans, the post game yeah. nuttiness, the are- the energy in that arena. I love that. I love that. When it crosses over to television, and now I have to hear Monica McNutt say that this guy is the greatest Nick ever. Like, n- no, that's too far. That's too far, man. And you got. Monica you you got Carmelo Anthony in the building watching the game, and they're rolling out the 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 great the, the Knicks of Knicks. Stephon Marbury's there. Carmelo Patrick even Ewing's made the playoffs. There. Yeah. Are you sure? Yes, they made the playoffs uh, uh, once. With Carmelo twice. Yeah. 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 Come on. Sure? Yes, I'm sure they. The Knicks the didn't go to the playoffs for like ten years, dude. The, how long do you think Carmelo's career was? But he was he did, with the Nuggets the, for a while. He did the first seven years on the Nuggets, and then the rest Playoffs. of them were on the Knicks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He made the Knicks. All right. Three. Three times. Okay. Yeah. Three times. It was. It was they after he left. It was after he left that they that didn't make the playoffs. Then that's what it was. Like they weren't. They weren't a threat with him, but yeah. they were entertaining. Am I alone here? I always feel like I don't know when anything happened ever. Like and people like I always see people like reference years. Like, I don't know anything about years. And that could just be my the way my brain works. I can't tell you what year was what. Sometimes I forget the Padres Dodgers series was 2022. And that was two years ago. Like, I am the I worst. Re- like, I cannot reference numbers ever. I, I always, I can't. I can remember what happened. I don't know when it happened. Yeah. That's my same. thing. Like, I can always recall when something happened. Yeah. But when someone's like, oh, a 19th. Like, I remember when the Cubs won the World Series. It, it's vivid in my mind. I can't mm-hmm. tell you what year it was. Same. I remember when the White Sox won the World Series. I can't tell you what year it was. I don't remember. I, I don't remember years. I don't remember years. I could tell you things that happened in my life. I don't know what year anything happened. Never. I I I, I just my brain don't, don't work that you. way, dude. People are always don't like, oh, you. in 1996 when the when the when the Packers won the Super Bowl. It's like that was that 96? I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't I know they won. Yeah. All right. We come back. I already teased it, but I'll tease it again. And I want to talk about my my nightmare is going to come true. Uh oh. Nightmare 100% is going to come true. Uh oh. I'm going to have to trade in the keys. Tell you next. All right, everybody, welcome back to Kaplan and Crew with just the crew. Scott back tomorrow, and uh, he's up at the uh, 
at, he was at the shell today while we were recording. So mm-hmm. uh, I hope you uh, breaking news, though, Browner. Breaking news in the life of Grande in the commercial break. And it's I kind of did it more for the show. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow is Joe Musgrove bobblehead night at Peco. Oh boy. I'm, I'm going. I'm going to go get you a bobblehead, dog. Oh I know how much I love the bobbleheads. Oh, my God. Get out of here. Get out of here. No, thank you, sir. <laughs> it's like your two no, least you, favorite sir. things. One, a bobblehead, and two, Joe Musgrove. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, no, man, don't do that to me. I can't let that slide. The first one is a definite. The first one is a definite. I think the idea that the sellouts are because of bobbleheads is massively over. They are. I am a fan of Joe Musgrove. So don't, and he not pitching. So just, you know, you're right about the bobbleheads. You're wrong about the Joe Musgrove. That's not, I don't dislike Joe Musgrove, but that's It's a great bobblehead. This is him and his dog. And he's wearing a bucket hat. I'm gonna go oh, get you man. one. I'll drop it off. No, please. Don't please worry. Don't. I got you. I got you. Please. You can put it on that okay. shelf behind you. You can. Also, I gotta stop putting something up here. I gotta put our Mount my San Diego Mount Rushmore up here, and then after that, I don't know what the hell's going up here. Brandon. I still can't believe you put Joe, uh, Bill Walton in that. That's crazy. Well, okay. Shout out. Yeah. Shout out. I love me some Bill Walton. Shout out to Balboa Park's finest. Balboa Park. Careful on that bike, Bill. All right. Uh, right. I've teased it enough, but I'll talk about it now. The NFL is going to release the entire schedule. Uh, on Wednesday at 5 o'clock. What does that mean? It means that every game is going to get leaked from here till Wednesday at 5 o'clock because that's just the way it works. Um, according to the NFL, multiple or all NFL partners will release select games like primetime games, stuff like that. But to kick it all off, we have an opener. Browner, the Chiefs, obviously, defending champions, reigning champions, whatever they're called. They will open the season. They will have the kickoff. Any idea who you think they're going to face? Do you know this already? Did I not even play the game? Did you see this already? Yeah, yeah, I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. Okay. I I saw it. Let me let me run it. Let me run this for you though, because the Chiefs, oh man, because they had a uh, they had options. They definitely had options. Um, like they're playing the Niners were on their schedule, the Bills were on their schedule, and the Bengals were on their schedule. But the NFL decided we're gonna do a little playoff free match. It's gonna be Ravens at the Chiefs, September 5th. Opening night on NBC. Hmm. You know, I'm I'm one of the biggest Lamar Jackson fans you'll find. Mm-hmm. It doesn't feel very sexy to me. Okay, we, okay. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to watch it. But if you're going to if you're going to tell me you're going to start the season with the Chiefs which you better, I yeah. need I need more firepower. All right, here's your here were your options. Okay. Obviously, you're in division. So you had Chargers, mm-hmm. Raiders, Broncos. But the NFL never, ever does a division game for the home opener. They always try and get a random matchup. No, so let's say that. those are out, right? This is the, who okay. you have remaining the Bills, the Falcons, the Texans, no. the Bengals, and, and the Ravens. Bengals. The Bengals sound more sexy to me. Healthy Joe, you gotta get Joe Burrow when he's early. I think that's why they didn't hurt. do it. I think that's why they didn't do it. Just really? in case Burrow's not back again. Yeah. Uh, not that he's hurt, just that he doesn't that he makes it back in time. Because now you have you have more of a, a aesthetically pleasing quarterback style. They've got better weapons in Cincinnati. The mm-hmm. defense is no name, but they're always very solid. Even though one of their guys is demanding a trade because he doesn't can't get a new contract. I think that that would have been more sexier, but mm-hmm. having Lamar Jackson versus Patrick Mahomes is a still it's watchable to me. It's watchable to me. I don't I don't necessarily think that that's gonna because I I don't know what Baltimore. I mean, let's do. be real. You put anything on an opening night, we're watching. We would have criticized them if it was two bad teams. Mm-hmm. We still would have watched it. Mm-hmm. Not, nothing deters to watch. So I. I just don't think Baltimore has enough weapons offensively for me to really be that, you know, up in arms about them you know, not being included in this game. So uh, there is something that you might get excited for, though, because this year the the I believe both the Rams and the Chargers play 25 percent of your team. I saw this. 
And oh, obviously God. the schedules are not out for everybody, but the Rams 2024 home opponents. Is it the who has the Bears? Or is this everybody away at the Bears? No, uh well the Bears have one home game in London. So I don't know how that's gonna, you know, reverberate. Within what I was saying is that there's a there's a chance that it's like Rams Bears Week One. I don't think that's going to be it. You don't think so? That better that better be in L.A. That's actually in Chicago. No, really? Yeah. Because uh, that's what we know. We know that the home opponents away opponents. We just don't know what what day. That's all. We just don't know what day. See, I I like Rams Bears in L.A. I don't Rams Bears in Chicago is, yeah. Caleb needs to get a game under his belt before he ran out in front of that crowd, man. Who do you want to see the Bears open with then? Probably going to be like the Vikings. Bruh, if all was well and good, the Packers. Because that's who that's who I want to beat. That's who I want that team to beat as much as they possibly can. And just to have, the, to have Caleb Williams' career start off with the biggest rivalry that they have and yeah. for him to win that game. Bear fans would never shut up because you wouldn't you wouldn't play the Packers again to somewhere in the end of the year, and so yeah. that would put enough gas in the tank. If we don't win another game to that game, people will be fired up. So I, I don't know, I I don't know, but that that would be my ideal first opponent would be the Packers or the Steelers. Do you guys play the Steelers this year? Nope, but I wish we did. Boy. Oh, I was gonna I say, do you play the Steelers did. this year? I wish we did, boy. I tell you right now. All right, so Justin so, Fields can return a kickoff for a touchdown against you guys. Listen, when Justin Fields is the starting quarterback and Russell Wilson is returning these punts or kicks, or I don't know whose idea this is. If if Justin Fields somehow finds his way against the Chicago Bears in a Steeler uniform, either whether it be this year, which doesn't like it's going to happen, or next year, in Soldier Field. Mm-hmm. That crowd is going to be insane. If it was this year, let's say week yeah. one, Bears yeah. Steelers. Absolutely. Oh my God. The division in that stadium? What? What? Yeah, it would be crazy. No. But we'll find that no. out on Wednesday. Wednesday is the uh the the schedule release, and we'll we'll have all the answers by then. I'm sure maybe we'll have like Eric Williams to talk about the breakdown for all the games that we care about. Yeah. Uh, all right, Browner. I don't want to. I, I I almost don't even want to bring it up, but I don't think I'm going to be able not to at some point. Uh-oh. I think you and Scott were right. I think before it happens, I was wrong. I think that I'm going to hate everything about next season. Oh, I think I, I think, think I know what this is about. I think that honestly, they're going to hire another first time coach who's LeBron's friend. <laughs> this is about- I think that the this is. My absolute nightmare. I want the Lakers to move on from LeBron James. I want the Lakers to just just, just accept that you're not going to win a championship with LeBron James as currently constructed. I just think that this is as bad as it gets for me personally. Now, there's a lot of Laker fans that are going to love it. There's a lot of Laker fans that believe that they should listen to LeBron and they should hire whoever he wants and do the thing that I don't want them to do, which is this. According to Sham Sharania, his son, Bronny James, is expected to stay in the 2024 NBA draft. Although, did I see a picture of him with an Ohio State jersey on this weekend? Did I Did I see something? Was that just AI? That was AI. Okay. So, Bronny James expected to go through the draft combine process, which is this week, I believe. And then they will stay in the draft, and the Lakers will waste either a first or second round pick and draft him. That's going to happen. And Shams is on Pat McAfee saying... Yeah, you know, the Lakers are very interested in that, but there's other teams as well. No, there's not. Stop it. No, there's not. Stop it. This kid's not good enough to be in the NBA. So you all can spin it however you want. He scored, he averaged four points last year. Four. He he has not, the ESPN's first round of mock drafts, he didn't even make it. He I think it's complete it. and utter BS that this kid is even drafted to the combine. Where guys like Jaden Ledee, because of his age, didn't even make it. And by the way, Jaden Ledee got screwed twice, and this even pissed me off more. He went to this G League camp yesterday, played very well over two games, and still didn't get invited to the to the five guys got invited from the G League camp. He was not one of them. 
and everyone's saying it's because he's age. His age, his rookie contract will be done when he's thirty years old. Shout out to Boogie Ellis who did get invited to the uh, draft camp. San, local San Diego player. Uh, look, man, Jordan Jaden Ladee is going to face a lot of headwind because of his age. But luckily for him, he dominated. So he has the statistics for a person of his age and size. He showed out. He mm -hmm. did what he was supposed to do against people the age in which he was playing. He destroyed them. They couldn't stop him. So I'm like everybody else. I can't learn anything about him at the combine. I just can't. Yeah. So therefore, I don't really need to see him here. And I so think a lot know? of general managers feel the same. But what do you know about this new rule? Is it? Okay. So Neil, shout out to Neil in the chat. He messaged me saying that if you are invited to the combine and you don't participate, you're automatically uneligible to be drafted. This is like the way that this is it's in the it's in the CBA. I looked it up, but I couldn't figure out what if you're just not invited to the combine? Does that make you uneligible to be drafted? To not okay. Did what like if a participant about? goes to the combine and doesn't participate in medicals and drills? They uh, that automatically disqualifies you from Correct. being drafted. They're basically Correct. trying to avoid what happens in the NFL, which is that these players go and don't do anything. So what this was boiling down to is you would have a guy like, let's say, Victor Wimbenyama mm -hmm. wouldn't go to the combine, wouldn't run, wouldn't interview, wouldn't do medicals. This was happening all the time. Right. And general managers were like, okay, we need to kill this because yeah. this is out of control. It was and happening so, so much because no one even knew there was a combine. Correct. <laughs> no one even Correct. knew there was a combine. Now, I did because I watch it on ESPN. But, man, listen. I'm telling you right now. This was put in, and it was for a good reason. Because these agents control the players at the top of the draft. We're telling these kids, you don't even need to show up. And if mm -hmm. I'm the NBA, uh, yeah, you do. Because I need to see you physically. You may put 6'5", you might be 6'3". That's a massive difference on whether we take you 1 or 5. And so that had become rampant. And I'm glad the NBA put something in there to justify that. Now, I can tell you right now, it's not because you didn't get invited to the combine, you can't get drafted, because there are guys overseas who can't make it for contractual reasons mm -hmm. that will be drafted this year. So it the... You just, just got to know the information. And so. No, but I'm Jay, just asking, I, is that, does that make him, he can still be drafted though, even he though he wasn't be, in, Okay. I believe Jaden Ledee will be a second round pick because one, that contract's not guaranteed. And if he was only good because he was bigger and stronger than all the other people he was playing against, he will be exposed very quickly at the NBA level. I don't think he will be though, because that physicality doesn't matter how old you are. Muscles are muscles. Mm -hmm. okay and and, and uh, skill is skill and him being turned away from these things it's got to be pissing them off yeah it's got to be well so uh going back to it where's Bronny gonna get picked the lakers are gonna take him the lakers <sighs> don't have a choice the I'm lakers done. listen the lakers you got to you gonna be done because the lakers the lakers are gonna hire another it looks like first both player. of us are gonna leave our first two loves you left the bears i'm leaving the lakers I had to. They were mistreating me. I have to. I have to. They're going to hire a first-time coach. This is fan malpractice. Yes, it is. This is fan malpractice. They're hiring another player, another coach with no experience to coach LeBron James. Like, what Did what was wrong with Darvin Ham? Well, because you can start on that. But wait until they get the new guy who does exactly the same thing after year one. Like, LeBron's... It's about to be 38, I think. No, he's gonna he's already 39. So LeBron might be 40 at some point next season. Yeah. No, he's stop. going to be 40 early in the season. Stop running your franchise through a 40 year old man that hasn't mm -hmm. accumulated you. This ain't Tom Brady, where you feel like, okay, we got this guy. We got a chance at the Super Bowl. This has been proven now. Multiple years. You might not even make the playoffs with this guy. By the way, this is the way it ended for Kobe, too. And what I mean yes. by that is, yes. what I mean by that is, they just threw a ton of money at a guy that couldn't stay healthy anymore, that was a shell of what he was, 
And yes, he, but it's because this organization, and I'll say it again, and if you believe me, sorry. If you don't believe me, sorry. This team is, this owner is petrified of not having a superstar on her team. Petrified. And she knows that Anthony Davis ain't it. She knows that you can't market oh, yeah. Anthony Davis to be the guy in LA. And we all know that. Anthony Davis is the Robin. We already know that. She, they did the same thing to Kobe. They, he was getting paid like $40 million. Crazy amount. Yeah. And, you know, 10 years ago, he was getting paid like $40 million. And there was a bunch of nobodies surrounded him with coaches that were whatever. And they were terrible. Now, they're not terrible now because they still have a better roster than Kobe did. But they're doing right. the same thing. They're doing but the man, same thing. I can't say this enough. And I wish there was someone in that office that had Jeannie Buss's ear that would say this to her. Play this for her if y'all can. You're the Los Angeles Lakers, okay? When you had the baby Lakers, post-Kobe, pre-LeBron, when you had Lonzo, Julius Randle, when you had that group together, Brandon Ingram, the city, you didn't sell out like, it wasn't glitz and glamour, but the city got behind those dudes. They came out and they cheered them. They were the young Lakers. There was an energy to that. You need to do that again. Yes, it may be ugly. And yes, it may take more than you're comfortable with doing. But mm -hmm. you're the Lakers, okay? The fans will come back to you, Jeannie. You're not going to lose them to the Dodgers or to the Clippers. You're not. They're not going to the Rams games and not spending their money. You're the Lakers. Like, you are the number one franchise in Los Angeles. Yeah. And it's not close. Act like it. Yeah, the Lakers, like I had to go back and look. They went through five coaches in Kobe's last. They went through five coaches, if you include Bernie Bickerstaff, six in Kobe's final five years. It, it just, that's not the way to go. There was, it's just, and it wasn't, it was just like this constant, like, hey, let's just keep changing the coach. Keep, no, how about you build a team? How about you build Please. a team post, post championship, which is exactly what Please. they're doing here. Post championship, build a team. Instead, you tore it down. You're firing coaches all the time now. And you're just going to listen to your superstar, whatever they want. Let's just do it because we got to keep them. We have to keep them. We can't lose them. There's no way we can lose LeBron and survive. You just can't give a 40-year-old guy this much control on the future of your organization because no coach now is taking anything less than a five-year deal. They're just not. Every head coach is getting five years, 35 to 45 million. So you got to put that in the bank yeah. to get a, a, a guy who's never coached, a, had never had coached a game before. Yeah. I, 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 I'm i just not, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing it's that. Bad. It's bad. I'm just not and, doing that. And it's going to happen and I'm just going to be, yeah. I'm already mad. I'm already mad and I can't, I'm going to be so mad. I'm just the so reports, mad. the reports of who they're looking at. I'm like, who the hell Dude, is and this then, guy? And then it's going to be, it's going to be nauseating when they parade Braun and Brawny together at the at a podium oh. in a press conference, oh. and they're gonna be like, "Welcome to the James." It's gonna be just disgusting, just gross, just not about basketball, not about winning, just about LeBron. If you're gonna draft him, draft him with the first pick in the second round, and just say we putting him on the G League Lakers, and that's where he's going. We I wish I had, I wish I had connections in the NBA to 31 other teams. You'd be like, please, please, someone just take him before the Lakers can. Somebody, the pick, somebody help right before. Don't tell anybody. The pick yeah. before, just take him. Just take him. Please, somebody, him. please help. Somebody, please help us. Do the, gonna do the Lakers are solid, man. Do the Lakers are solid. Somebody else, please take him. Please, please take him. Yeah, because it's going to happen. I don't, yeah, literally, like, if if it's out there, and if it's out there from Shams, it, it's because it's going to happen. Yeah, uh, the NBA is going to crater watching this. Because oh. the kid should go to college if he didn't have a guaranteed job with one team. But he has a guaranteed job. With there's, one no way he's gonna, there's no way he's going to stay in the draft and not be drafted. The Lakers are there. not going to let him go undrafted. A second round pick is $2 million, okay? Yeah. So the way that the NBA is structured, yeah, you, can you, buy can, a pick. you can buy a second round pick for $2 million. LeBron will give the Lakers $2 million of his own mm -hmm. money to pick his kid. Like, this is, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Buckle up. Yeah, I don't like it. 
I don't like it one bit. Uh, this segment was brought to you by uh, our partners and friends at Tory Holistics, where the promo code is Kaplan Crew. You spend a minimum of $75, you get 20% off your purchase at Tory, California, and Oxnard Holistics with the promo code Kaplan Crew. Spend a minimum of 75 bucks, get 20% off your purchase. That's pretty easy and straightforward and amazing. So there you go. All right. If you're listening on radio, stick around. We got more to come. If you're watching on YouTube, stick around next. We also have Uncensored coming up. Uh, shout out to everybody for being here. Scott is going to be back tomorrow, back to normal, full week. Uh, because I know we have some time off at the end of the week, at the end of the month, excuse me. But for right now, we're going full steam ahead. Uh, Padres going to host the Rockies here tonight, starting shortly. So we'll talk to everybody later. Until then, peace out. Go for it. Hey, uh, <coughs> Papa John Schneider, okay? Apparently, oh. you done showed up, bro. You where the fuck you been, okay? Wherever you was at, take your ass back over there, all right? Jason Whitlock, you find every fucking worm under every rock you possibly can to crawl out on your show and be, you, you're so forcibly right. It, it It's just unappealing, bro. Even if you have a what good are you segment. talking about? So Jason Whitlock, you always we, jump in like all the way when we don't even know there's a pool to jump into. I'm in the deep end already swimming. Jason Whitlock is a former Kansas City Star, ESPN, Fox Sports One level reporter. He was like, he's fat Stephen A. Pretty much, right? So but he's right, now but right wing, right? But 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 I don't believe he's right. But he is for the money. So yes, he's right wing. He is now working for OutKick, okay? On his show today was John Schneider, okay? The John Papa John guy. The oh. Papa, remember the his Papa name's not John's Papa? Guy? No. Oh. He calls himself Papa John Schneider. So he's basically saying that he fired the NFL. Like, oh, I didn't want to work with them. They didn't fire me. Bro, listen. John you need to Schneider. You need to go sit down somewhere, okay? Nobody asking for you. Nobody wants to hear your story. You got caught being racist and sexist, fam. And they and they told you, tap out, you got to go. Not the NFL. The board at your company threw you out, okay? Not the NFL. They discontinued their business partnership with you. Mm -hmm. Your board on your company asked you to get your shit and go to a different office in yeah. the back, in the yeah. basement. Yeah, like we can't fire you, but you can take some money and go sit the fuck down because you don't speak for your own company no more. That's so how you wild you got. Mm -hmm. So what? You, what got you mad here? Because he, he now say? showed up. He showed up on Jason Whitlock's show, saying how the NFL is leftist and how Roger Goodell is a, like a, a pussy, basically, and mm -hmm. how. He fired the NFL. He fired Roger Cadell. They didn't fire him. Rewriting history. Bro, stop. Tr People's memory ain't that fucking yeah. bad. I thought you were going to talk about the Shaq thing because I just Googled it. Oh, Shaq, owned, Shaq got no. all his stores. Right. But did you see what he said on the same podcast? No, I didn't get to that part yet. Okay. Okay. Headline. Oh, wait. Oh yeah, I thought this, I thought this is where you were going. This is the best no. part. You just you, you let it. Yeah, you're in the deep end, and you did. Let me tell you, former Papa John's that. owner John Schnettner calls it quote racist that Shaquille O'Neal <laughs> became the face of his franchise in 2018. Shatner stepped down as CEO oh, uh, because he used the N word in a company wide conference call. So he was removed in 2018. While speaking on the Fearless with Jason Whitlock podcast, Shatner said he thinks putting O'Neal at the forefront was a way to mask the racial controversy. What racial controversy? Bro, you just said the N-word. There's no controversy. Anyways, saying, quote, of all the things, that was the most racist. They're going to use a black guy to cover up what they did to a white guy? That's racist. Now that's racist. They did it right in front of America. It was just a shield to cover up the infidelities of what they did to me. Listen, man, if you ever want to see a racist man mad because they took his company and filled his position with a black man, 
There you have it. I didn't even get to that part yet. <laughs> oh, shit. So he mm -hmm. basically just said, they gave that N-word my job. That's racist. Bro, that's mm -hmm. why you lost your job. It kind of sounds more racist. Watch. Okay, here. It sounds more racist as he says it. Oh, my God. <laughs> The face of Papa John's pizza. I think it's. A, I think of all the things that was the most racist. They're going to use a black guy to cover up what they did to a, a, a white guy. That's racist. <laughs> now that's racist. And they did it right in front of America. You know, he was just the shield to cover up their infidelities and what they did to me. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? You did it to you. What are you do? like, bro? You can't, you cannot. Okay, if he was with his girlfriend, all right, and he didn't like black people, and he was using the n word, and it comes out that oh, his wife said or his girlfriend said, you can fight that. You're not gonna lose your employment over that. But if you go on a company wide call, and you do that, under any context, jokingly or not, you cooked. Yeah, your crust burnt. You good. You you done. You done, bro. So for you to now try to blame other people because yeah. your racism got the sunlight shown on it, that's all you. What's up? Uh, and Jason, Jason would like it got no pushback for nothing. Jason, Jason would like, you fat fuck, do something. It's right in front of you. Isn't it better to just let your guests do their thing and then and then, but don't let him, don't push back yet. Let him keep talking. Let him keep going. And then you can clip it and use it as promotion to get people like you mad. And then you're going to tune in. You're probably going to now go watch the whole podcast. I have to now. I See? don't want to. Work, I don't, work, check, it got check. Me, it got me. I listen. There, and like I said, to start this whole thing, there you know, are fucking two people I never want to hear talk. You know, those you are. are two of them. Who, what am I? Racist. I listen man. for watching. Listen. Do you, wait, hold I on. Guess. Let me ask you a question. Do you order Papa John's pizza still? I stopped ordering Papa John's. Racist. Came out and I, Racist. <laughs> Racist. I, listen, <laughs> when they gave when they gave Shaq all those Papa John's to John to to this man's you know yeah. credit, I said, "Ain't no way in hell I'm falling for that okie doke." I know what y'all are doing. Kudos to Shaq. Shout out to Shaq for getting all them free Papa John's that they gave him. I guess they couldn't give Peyton Manning enough Papa John for him to take the job. I don't think but Peyton Manning wanted to job. touch this shit anymore after what he did. Bro, after that shit hit, Peyton Manning said, uh-uh, uh-uh, no, yeah. no, no, no. Y'all yeah. not finna look. I've been in commercials with this motherfucker. What y'all yeah. mean to tell me that he been doing what on the yeah, side? No. He didn't do anything except use the N-word. But you did, it live on a, you did it live on a conference call. But he said it was to eliminate the use of the word. That's you know why he said people... it. He's like, you know what? We got to get rid of the N-word. But he said the N-word. But and, and this is a, this has been live. This is your clean. fault. This is your fault. No, 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 no. This is your I, fault. Listen, Scott's gonna be so something happens whenever Scott's not on this show. That makes him so mad. He's gonna be so mad he missed this conversation. There are certain ways that you can address that word without saying that word. And he did and he out. <laughs> really not, there's really not that many ways. All you gotta say is the N-word. Like that's, that's just it. And we that's all know it. we're saying, does it make us racist that we're saying it in our head? What you say within your own spirit <laughs> is a reflection of your character. And if that's yeah. what you do, then that's what you do, man. And, yeah. that, and if it don't get out, that's something that you know about you that nobody else should know. And that's it. And that's, that's it. it. But when, that's when it. you out here, you're on a live carpet, and now you're going around, now you showing up on, on the internet, which never forgets anything. Telling people that it was racist what they did to you, a white man. How dare a company of such magnitude get a face that's not like mine to promote this company? A face that people actually like and recognize. But no, he's black, so it's racist. I mean, I did get famous making I these love pizzas. People. I love. I people. did get. I love. I people. got famous. Make. I was racist when I was making these pizzas. Nobody ever asked me no questions about the N word. So when y'all finally asked me on a conference call, I didn't know y'all was gonna feel like this. I would never said y'all. I've been making pizzas to get to this point, huh? Yeah. Huh? You don't see. Hey, you don't see my pillow being promoted by Charles Barkley. I don't know what that was about, but okay.
Well, the my pillow guy is always talking about how he gets canceled too for his yeah. political views. Well, at least he got at least he got a soft place to lay his head. Oh, let's leave it at that, Papa John. I haven't had your pizza in a long time, but I do remember that little garlic dip was pretty good in the pizzas. That was that was it a nice is. touch. I'm sure it's a nice still touch. Is. Yeah. All right, we out of here. Scott back tomorrow. Browner, you go listen to that podcast. Have fun. Later. <laughs>